Hello everyone and welcome! As someone who has to fact check around the internet a lot, I tend to read a lot of players views and opinions that may be really old. League of Legends has a world that has been changed many times. Its lore started with champions bios having two or three lines. But at least it had the tribunal judgment. A few lines written by the summoners who judged the champions mental state. Then it was told through newspaper articles. Seriously, that's what Journal of Justice really was. And finally, then we got the episodic fleshed out lore. But with so many changes, obviously the community still thinks some of the old stories are still canon. And sometimes it's not even the old stories. Sometimes people simply don't read the full story and they think something is real, while it really isn't. So today I want to debunk 5 story myths that people think are true. And because some of them really grind my gears, let's get right into them. Let's start with a story that doesn't irritate me that much, but it is still a story where people stubbornly protect their knowledge, despite me being 100% sure they are wrong. This is the story of Tam Kench and the Gambler. Tam Kench is a demon who offers to give someone a new life, in exchange for a meal that would satisfy his hunger. As Tam Kench puts it, I got hungers that ain't easily fed. But those finest tables, they ain't never got a seat for me. So I need men, like yourself, to let me in. In Tam Kench's teaser, there was a gambler who ran away from the law. He then met Tam Kench, who offered him a way out, in exchange for a seat at a dining table. And since all the gambler ever did was take chances, he accepted Tam Kench's offer. So Tam Kench snatched the man and dropped him in a different land, at the stairs to a palace. Years passed and the gambler found his love. The bride was a princess and the wedding was massive. That's when Tam Kench decided to rise from the river and take his half of the bargain. Now when that hungry beast finally did arise, the family screamed and fought. And although the gambler tried to cast him out, it ate the gifts and house and gold. For its hunger, nothing satisfied. Please, not now, not this time. The bride did cry. The beast's response to her it purred. This hunger's a burden, but it's the last time, I swear. So please, forgive. Now the creature's lies, so melodic and sincere, charmed that bride, and thus she failed to recognize when that demon's jaw unhinged. She screamed just once as I snapped her bones and crushed her limbs. Now that meal, <laughs> it left me satisfied. So cry if you want, boy, cause you had a chance to walk away. Instead, you're the fool, the fool who let me in. You see, this teaser was released in 2015, and during those times people were obsessed with connecting everything to random champions. I think this theory crafting mania was evoked by the lack of lore. People simply wanted more stories and more connections. But in the process, people created theories that others would take for granted. So since there was a gambler in the story, everyone started saying it was twisted fate. Because why else would there be a gambler, right? And from Bilgewater on top of that. It's not like there are hundreds of other outlaws in Bilgewater. Nope, Twisted Fate is a unique snowflake. In any case, let's get to the bottom of this. The Gambler is not Twisted Fate. This was debunked many times by Riot themselves. In fact, in a Q&A they even said that Tom Kench was the real name of that Gambler. And the demon adopted that name. I really wish I still had a link to the source, but that one was lost in time. If you want to look for it, I believe it was a separate post on the main League of Legends site. Now let's get into another theory that stubborn people like to protect. A theory that says that Kindred used to be Jin. You know what's the worst thing about this one? The fact that Jin's story was perfectly fleshed out and established in the new universe by the time this theory became popular. And yes, I am looking at you, Jeremy. If it wasn't for your video spreading fan-made theories built on blind connections, I wouldn't have to clean up this mess. 
But I don't want to give Jeremy a hard time. Not since there is a much worse abomination ahead of us. The theory that Kindred used to be Jin is based on Kindred's teaser. Ram, tell me a story. There was once a pale man with dark hair who was very lonely. Why was it lonely? All things must meet this man, so they shunned him. Did he chase them all? He took an axe and split himself in two. So he would always have a friend. So he would always have a friend. Just like it was with Tam Kench, we can see the lore community in development and their hunger for lore. In their natural habitat of LOL wiki, one can connect anything to anyone. Also, did you know that Ezreal discovered Rigel's Lantern? Yeah, it's supported here by an article from the Journal of Justice. But it's actually not labeled as Journal of Justice here, so it must be canon. Anyway, Kindred's entire theory is based on the fact that Jin is also wearing a mask. And that he appears to be a pale man. Later people found some connections between them, especially from artistic point of view. Jin is all about acting on stage and Kindred is all about poems and acts. For Jin it's obvious why he behaves that way. He's just an art maniac. But Kindred is a legend of a fairy tale. There are stories, poems and even life plays about her. The reason why Kindred are so poetic is because they are reflecting how people see them. They are a spirit after all. So as my closing statement, Kindred and Jin are two different characters and there is no real reason why Riot would even try to confuse their player base with something like this. Just because two different champions both have masks doesn't mean they are the same thing. Next we have Doran and Orn. Now, here we actually need to talk about three different characters. There's Durant, Doran and Orn. Durant is a sculptor from Demacia. I understand that his profession is very similar to that of a blacksmith, but try not to confuse them. Since Durant is from the other side of Valoran, he probably never met Doran or Orn. But that's not what people are getting confused. Because in this case, people are simply turning a feather into a chicken. You see, Orn's mountain used to have a small village at its side. This village was full of incredibly talented blacksmiths. They didn't wear shoes because their feet were warmed up by the magma below. And they had access to the best materials. One of Orn's quotes mentioned Doran. And because of this quote, people think that Doran and Orn were best buddies. I taught Doran everything he knows. I understand that it really sounds like it, but Orn never taught anyone anything. He had a really passive relationship with these people. He would never pick his favorites. The way it worked was that Orn simply crafted his tools and he let others watch him. So it wasn't really that he would teach them, but rather that they learned from observing him. So this quote was more aimed at the fact that Doran's entire town was passively learning by watching Orn's work. It is likely that to Orn, Doran was just a person in a crowd. But as Doran himself started crafting powerful items, Orn recognized him as an individual. But that was highly likely after Doran made his work popular. The next theory is somewhat of a weird one. It's not really a theory because it is something people accepted as an obvious thing. I'm talking about Jinx and Vi being sisters. Every person who knows anything about the lore knows that they were never confirmed to be sisters. In fact, their stories never even hinted it. The quote that started this madness was this one. You think I'm crazy? You should see my sister. This one confirms that she has a sister. So obviously everyone jumped on the hype train that it has to be Vi. And what's even worse is that this fake confirmation spread so quickly and so effectively that even some developers believed it. This escalated to even greater heights when Ghostcrawler accidentally fake confirmed this. Keep in mind that Ghostcrawler is working on balance and gameplay. He has no connections with the narrative team. So his information was purely based on what the rest of the community knows. Actually, mm, uh, people say that there is a phrase about Jinx's sister in the game. So I, uh, mm, uh, as, as far as I understand, uh, she herself tells some kind of, uh, of a phrase about her sister. Well, she, her, she sister her, sister. her sister is yes, in the game. Her sister is in the game. Yes, there's another ah, champion. Ah. Her name is Vi. Yeah. Okay, Vi. Yeah. Vi is the sister of, of Jinx and she is in the game. Yes. Okay. It was actually a user uh, question, yeah. so okay. Uh, 
To round this up, let me just say that Vi and Jinx are not sisters as far as the lore goes. In my opinion, it would be pretty cliche if it was confirmed. And now, the greatest evil there ever was. The theory that Zed is Nocturne. This theory can enrage me very easily. This is because this entire theory is based on the fact that the splash arts of Zed and Nocturne line up. No, not even basic Zed. This theory is based on the fact that the splash art of a champion and another champion skin lineup. This was later supported, once again, by something said in the Journal of Justice. There was an article about a summoner who had never ending nightmares. He cried out once before he stopped breathing. This was because he was obsessed by Nocturne, who had the full control over sleeping victims. So people immediately connected this to Zed's lore. In his story, Zed followed his master into the temple and also cried out once in pain. But in his story, we have no idea what happened. I kinda understand why people believe this though. This theory was created only a month after the Journal of Justice ended. And two months before it was taken down from all sources. So it is possible that many people still thought all of this was canon. But even if it was, the theory is still based on two overlapping skins. It's not like this hasn't happened many other times. Seriously. But don't worry, the spooky coincidences didn't end there. Both champions are assassins. Both are related to shadows. Their secondary role is fighter. There is Nocturne's passive Umbra Blades. And do you know what Umbra is? It is the darkest place of a shadow. <gasps> that also has blades and or shadows. After that, the community figured out that they have similar quotes. And hold there for a second. You can't be serious about this. Listen to the quotes and tell me if they confirm anything. Cut them from this world. Cut the last breath from them. Seriously, this is a strong point of the theory. Both quotes are so vague that you can give them to anyone. They both cut people because they have blades. That's it. Honestly, the deeper I go into this theory, the more mad I'll get. So let me quickly bring up the most enraging parts. Apparently this quote Do not fear the shrouded path is supposed to reference Nocturne's Q because it is a shrouded path. Also, Nocturne's Q and Zed's Q are both skill shots. Nocturne's and Zed's ultimates make them fly to their target. Zed's E and Nocturne's passive both spin around. Nocturne has a shield and Zed doesn't, but that doesn't matter, they are related anyway. But all jokes aside now, this theory was supposed to be all about Zed slowly being corrupted by the shadows. So over time, Zed would turn into Nocturne. But again, I doubt Riot would want to confuse people like this. In the end, this theory was born when someone noticed two pictures that matched up. The rest is just connecting random words and numbers. There is one problem, however. Sometimes Riot likes to compliment what the community comes up with. Sometimes they hide knots in their stories. And if Riot really wants to tie Nocturne to Zed, there is only one way to do it in the new universe. Let's say that Zed got corrupted by a demon when he learned the shadow techniques. Later, during the siege of the Kinko monastery, Kusho ripped Zed's demon from his body. This would explain the scream, but not why Kusho died. But this would be the only way how Nocturne could be tied to Zed. One big issue is that Nocturne is currently somewhere in Demacia, while Zed is on the other side of Runeterra. So ultimately, I have to call this theory busted. And that's pretty much it for this video. I quickly wanna say that I meant no hate towards Jeremy, Red Mercy or any other theory crafter. It's just that these theories don't make sense in the new universe anymore. And some of them didn't make sense from the very beginning. I just wanted to clean up this mess, so that when people talk about the new stories, they don't bring up dead ends. But that's all I wanted to say. So if you enjoyed this video, feel free to like it and subscribe for more lore. You can also follow us on Twitter, Facebook and Discord if you'd like to chat. I started streaming somewhat often, so if you'd like to chat live on stream, don't forget to follow us there too. Merch and PO Box will be in the description. Massive shout out to our patrons for going the extra mile. And with that, thank you all so much for watching and for your support. You know, I really appreciate it. And as always, thank you, come again.